the modern military aircraft carrier is a formidable war machine. It is essentially a mobile airbase, capable of deploying a country's aerial force anywhere around the globe, regardless of distance from its home country. These incredible machines can measure up to 333 meters in length, and weight upwards of 106,300 metric tons. The largest carriers can carry as many as 90 airplanes and helicopters, with a full complementary crew of 3,200 seamen and another 2,480 airmen. This video will show you the history of the aircraft carrier, from its beginnings to the mighty supercarriers of today. The aircraft carrier's beginning dates back to the 19th century, where floating barges were used to anchor hot air balloons for observation purposes. In 1840s, the Austrian Navy used hot air balloons in a failed attempt to drop bombs on the city of Venice. During the American Civil War, the United States used gas-filled balloons for long-distance observation of Confederate forces. The fixed-wing airplane became a reality in 1903, but it took only eight years for the French Navy to construct a seaplane carrier, planes were lowered to the water and allowed to take off. In January 1911, Eugene Ely became the first person to land and take off from a stationary ship. In 1918, the British Navy converted the HMS Argus into the first flat-topped aircraft carrier by the mid-1920s, several navies around the world commissioned the construction of flat-deck aircraft carriers. These were usually created using existing ships that were modified to fulfill their new roles. They played a significant role in World War II. Towards the end of World War II, the emergence of jet-powered airplanes prompted significant changes to the design of the aircraft carrier, introducing an angled landing strip, 9 feet off of the carrier's main axis, allowing for safer landings, if a pilot were to land too fast and miss the arrestor cables, they just need to increase speed and take off once more, without risking the rest of the ship. Another improvement was the introduction of the catapults, which are used in modern carriers to launch planes at high velocity. The 1950s and 60s rise of the nuclear age, an invention of the helicopter, and both these innovations brought a new era in aircraft carrier design. Nuclear reactors were installed in the new USS Enterprise aircraft carrier, allowing it to operate for significantly longer periods, while helicopter carriers were built as smaller support carriers. During this time, the British Navy built smaller carriers by incorporating ramps, shortening the distance needed to launch the airplanes. Through the second half of the 20th century, the aircraft carrier became a symbol of naval might, and many were constructed by different countries. They were used by the U.S. during the wars in Korea and Vietnam, and the Gulf War. Throughout Southeast Asia, former colonies used them in various conflicts, including the Indo-Pakistan War, and even during the British-Argentine Falkland War. At present, various countries still operate aircraft carriers, but due to high operation costs most of countries uses helicopter carrier these days, United States is the only country in the world to operate supercarriers, which are the largest aircraft carriers in existence. All ten supercarriers are Nimitz-class carriers, some of which entered service in the late 1970s, with the latest edition joining in 2009. Future plans include two Gerald R. Ford-class supercarriers, while the UK is also constructing a couple of Queen Elizabeth-class supercarriers. The American supercarriers will introduce a new type of catapult, an electromagnetic launch system, launch which uses magnets instead of aircraft, steam to accelerate planes off the deck. These new supercarriers will also utilize the newest radar technology, advanced countermeasures, unmanned drones, and much more. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. I'm working on it. Stay safe.